Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the X64 assembly language series. Today, we're going to uh, finish out reading a file and retraining its contents. And we're going to start by copying the uh, previous, actually, the previous uh, directory that we have. And we're going to copy it to a new directory called 06. And we're going to go into here. And let's see, let's go into 06 over here. Excellent. And what we're going to do is right now, uh, as we last left it, we have this temporary code here, which figures out the size of the file, converts it to a string, and then uh, prints that out to the console. Uh, so we're going to completely replace this. And the idea is we're going to allocate memory uh, for the size that we need. And then we're going to read the file and into, um, into a, a memory buffer and then return that buffer. So in order to do that, we're going to have to actually allocate memory. And the way that we do that is with a system call um, named mmap. So uh, for memory mapping. And what this, what this system call does is it asks the operating system to map some RAM for us. Now, we can actually map uh, files into the RAM system, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to just get a piece of memory. Uh, so this, uh, this uh, call, as you can see here, has some question marks with it. And so we're going to look at the documentation for MMAP to see how we should use it. And uh, Tutorials Point here has a nice little page on MMAP. And so uh, the thing that we give to it is an address that you want it to start in memory, or the address that you want the memory to start at. Now, typically what you want to do is if you want to have a... Uh, a portable program, you need to set this as null. And uh, the vast majority of examples that you will see with this will have it be null. The next is the length, which is how many bytes that you want uh, uh, the operating system to uh, allocate for you. And typically this needs to be a multiple of the um, of the page size that is currently used by the operating system. Now some operating systems have large page sizes, which are maybe two megabytes or more. But most operating systems, even Windows and Linux, uh, often run at four kilobyte um, page sizes. So we'll just need to allocate uh, memory at four uh, kilobyte uh, intervals. So if we say need, uh, say we need uh, 4,100 bytes, then we'll actually allocate two pages, which will be two four kilobyte pages. Uh, if we need less than that, we're going to allocate just a full page. Then we have uh, protection flags, and those protection flags can be exec, read, write, or none. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, um, we're actually going to have write. So we're going to be able to write into this memory buffer that we have. In fact, we'll probably want read and write. So that way the page can be read and written. Uh, then uh, uh, finally, we'll want some uh, flags here, uh, which will tell us some information that we want about the memory or how we want that memory uh, to be allocated. And so for us, we will want to have a map private. So uh, we don't want to share our memory with other processes, so we're going to have map private. And the other thing that we'll want to do is or these map private bits uh, with map anonymous. And uh, when you use map anonymous, these last two flags, this file descriptor and the offset, are not used. So as I had said earlier, you can actually map a file into RAM. And you can say, OK, here's the file descriptor of the file I want to map. And I want to start at a certain offset of that file. But we don't want to do that. We just want a piece of memory. So we can ignore these things if we set uh, one of our flags uh, bits to be uh, map anonymous. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to do all of those things today. And the first thing that we need to do is, um, uh, well, let's just type out some of the things that we'll need to do is uh, determine the number of pages uh, to allocate. And then we will um, uh, allocate uh, pages using uh, mem map. Then we will uh, read file into buffer, uh, and then we will return the buffer. So 
So those are the major steps that we want to accomplish. So we need to determine the number of pages that we want to do. So this means however many bytes that the file is divided by 4096. Now the thing is, what if we, what if the file that we're uh, reading from is less than 4096 bytes, say it's 200 bytes. Well, if we divide that by 4096, then we'll get an answer of zero. So that means in order to have at least one page, uh, we should just add a page on there just to make sure that we have one page. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do this by, uh, uh, we're gonna zero out RDX. Uh, RDX uh, with RDX, uh, set RDX to zero. And the reason we're doing that is because we're gonna want to divide, um, do an integer division. If we don't set RDX to zero, then we'll get a floating point error. Now, uh, the other thing that we'll want to do is uh, move into RAX uh, the number of bytes uh, that we have. Um, now, if we seek to the end of the file, uh, I believe that REX will already have the file size. Uh, and that's true because we can see down here for this temporary thing that we are moving REX into RSI. And that means REX already had uh, the, um, the file size in it. So we can say that here. We can say REX already has file uh, uh, number has number of bytes. Now, the interesting thing about this is if we divide uh, um, divide by 4096, the answer is going to go into RAX. Uh, so I think that we won't need RAX, or, or we won't need the number of bytes later on. No, actually, that's false. Uh, what we're going to do is we should, since we don't have an allocator, right? Remember, we're kind of doing this um, the non-recommended way. So in a real program, you're not going to want to use memmap or mmap to allocate memory for yourself. You're really going to want to create an allocator like uh, 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 malloc. So malloc is actually kind of a uh, complicated function behind the scenes that actually has a whole system of keeping track of memory. And when your program asks for memory and uses malloc, it actually goes and divides pages of memory up, or if it runs out of pages, it can ask the operating system for more. And, and so then when you free memory, it actually uh, has a whole system of being able to free that memory. And what we're doing is we're doing things uh, completely from scratch, asking the operating system for memory. Now, uh, this is not recommended for real programs, but I want to show how you would do this uh, manually from scratch. Uh, so in, in the real world, um, I mean, if you have to build stuff from scratch, then you'll be building an implementation of malloc. Uh, and so this will kind of introduce the concept of, of uh, allocating memory when you do not have malloc. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, the output um, is rex which is going to be the file contents buffer, but we're also going to uh, output uh, in, let's see, let's figure out what would be a good other, uh, let's say RDI. Let's also return from RDI um, the uh, size of the file contents. Uh, let's see. Do we need that or should we just return the number of bytes that was allocated? Maybe we should return the number of bytes that was allocated because if we do uh, m unmap, then that function m unmap gives a, we give it a uh, address and then a length. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll just return the number of bytes um, that we allocated. So that'll be good. But we probably also want to return the bytes, like the size of the file that we read too, because if we're going to print this out, we want to print it out with the right um, length. Because if you remember our print function or our write console function takes a buffer, 
but it also takes the size, the number of bytes of that string that we want to print out. So what we're going to do is we're going to return both, both of these things. So RDI will have the size of the file contents and we're going to use another register RSI to return the size of the uh, buffer allocation. So that way, uh, when you want to uh, release that memory or free that memory, we can unmap that memory. So that's what we will do. And that means that we need to save uh, this file size, right? We can't just, um, well, RAX has the number of bytes, but we do need to save those bytes uh, for later. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into our, um, let's see, what would be a good, a good register to do this with? Um, that's a good question. Well, what we could do, let's see. Well, uh, that's actually a good question for looking things up on Wikipedia. So uh, we want to look at the uh, system, I believe, system 5 ABI. And there should be uh, these calling conventions. Here we go. So if we look at the calling conventions, there are caller and callee saved registers, which we had talked about before. Here we go, caller or callee clean up, and there should be, for x64, there should be a list of these things. Here we go, the registers are considered non-volatile -vol callee saved. So RBP, uh, RBX, uh, RBP, RDI, RSI, RSP. Okay, so this is very good. So we should be able to use these registers. We'll just use one of these registers to save uh, the bytes that we have uh, right now. So let's just use, say, R15 or something like that. It should be safe. So we're going to do that. Uh, let's go back up. Uh, read file. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to save into R15, RAX, save the file size uh, for returning later. So RAX already has the number of bytes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move into RAX. Um, no, uh, we're, we're going to move into, say, RSI, maybe, uh, 4096, because we've already got RDX, and you don't want to fill RDX with the, um, the number that you want to divide. So we're just going to use RSI, and then we're going to do, um, I believe, IDIV, and we're going to do uh, by RSI, and I think... Uh, if I remember correctly, that's how it should work. So we're going to say idiv um, x64. And we're going to look at this idiv function. So it's an integer division signed integer division, which we don't really care for this because both the numbers will be unsigned. Uh, but it should be fine. So the uh, dividend will be here. The divisor will be, uh, ah, yes. So we'll give a divisor, which will be a register or a memory address, 64-bit. Uh, and the dividend uh, will always be an RAX. Uh, so that should be good. So if we do uh, IDIV RSI, we will find um, um, so bytes uh, divided by uh, 4,096. Um, this number of pages. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to increment um, racks so that way uh, uh, if the number of bytes of the file is less than 4096, we need to allocate at least one page. So this will just make sure no matter what that we have at least one page and if you know if we allocate more than one page that we need it, it's fine. So uh, so we're going to allocate, uh, so this will be the number, uh, the number of pages. So, uh, uh, pages could be zero. So increment by one. And then what we'll do is we'll multiply this by 
4096. So that way we'll have the exact number of bytes that we need. So uh, I believe we can do an imul here. So if we go back to an, in, uh, an index, we probably should be able to use either mole or imul. And do, 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 here we go, imul, signed multiply, perfectly fine. Uh, so imul, we should be able to do register, wait, is there a 60? Okay, 64. Aha, okay, register 64, um, register 64. Nice, okay. So uh, we're gonna do, oh, and we can do it by an immediate, uh, but we already have a register that has 4096. So we're gonna do rex with RSI, which already has 4096, multiply by 4096 to get total bytes. So the, now we have the number of, of uh, bytes uh, for the pages. So we've calculated the number of pages that we need and then multiply that by the number of bytes. In fact, we'll just say the number of bytes to allocate just so we understand what that is. Um, now we need to all, uh, allocate those bytes using minmap. Uh, using the uh, example that we had before. So that means that the uh, first register needs to have a null or a zero inside of it. And so that um, uh, our, the system call, well, well, RAX needs to have the system call. So that means that mmap uh, is system call number nine. So we're gonna have move into our, oh, actually, that's right, RAX has the number of bytes that we need. So we need to move that into the proper thing. So. That will be into RDI, or actually, let's see. Let's make sure about that. Do, do, okay, the length, yes. So the length, oh, so actually, so system colon RAX, RDI will have null or zero, and then the next one, RSI, will have uh, the bytes that we need. So let's do that. So uh, move. RSI uh, needs to have that. So bytes to allocate. Then we're gonna move into, we'll, we'll go backwards. So RDI. RDI will be the, oh, uh, will be null. So, so this will be Zor RDI, RDI, uh, and this, is actually what is the name of that? It'll, the uh, address is really what it is. Address. Um, let the OS choose. There we go. Then we need to move the um, the number. So th this will be nine. So that will be uh, move. Uh, um, into rax x09. This will be the mmap system um, call. In fact, we'll just call it mmap. Ultimately, we'll do a sys call on that. But there's a couple other things that we need. We need a couple more uh, registers. Uh, fill them out. We need to have the protection. So we're going to have protect read and protect write. Now, uh, the thing is, is how do you know what these values are? Uh, the, the documentation doesn't say what these values are, uh, but we need the actual numbers so we can or them together. So what we're going to do here is create just a tiny little uh, test program. So test.c. And we'll have... Um, We'll just have std IO. Uh, we'll have mmap, I believe, mmap.h. There should be an example here. Uh, sys man. Okay. Sys man.h. That's good. Uh, then we'll have int main. And we'll be use proper things, and we'll just have void return zero. And then what we'll have here is a print f, where we're going to print uh, what 
uh, prot read is and prot write and prot read um, pro, whoops, prot write and then the other thing that we'll want to do oh wait what happened here okay the other thing that we'll want to do is we'll also want to print out what uh, map let's see map private and map anonymous okay and uh, mm, let's see oh whoops actually I didn't mean that so let's see if this works hopefully I did this correctly map private and then mm, there we go and then we're gonna go over here and paste that oh undo paste that so we map private and map anonymous and that will give us these two values and we should be able to see um, what these values are so then if we do GCC test if I haven't forgotten any uh, maybe I did forget some header files let's see this map oh did I spell it incorrectly map anon oh yeah I did spell it incorrectly okay we can fix that do 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 okay here we go and we'll just do that Okay, there we go. A dot out. So prot read is one and prot write is two. So if we or those bits together, we get three. So that's very easy. So move into, uh, let's see, uh, do, 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 in map. So the protection will just be three. So this is uh, one, two, three. And here we go. One, two, three, RDX. So RDX is three and we'll say prot um, read ord with prot write okay then the other thing that we'll want to do I guess if we're going backwards we'll just put this over at the front then the last one will be uh, r10 and this one will be uh, 2 and 32. So let me see. Uh, 32, 32. Yeah, 34. So that'll be good. So let's see. OX. Oh, no. I'm Now I have to do math. So uh, let's see. 1632. There, right? Sh that should be correct. Like 1632, 34, right? Uh, hopefully I did my math is correct. So this will be map uh, private or with map anonymous. Okay, and there we go. So now we do that syscall and that will give, uh, that will allocate and then rex after this call will now have the address of our allocated memory. After this, we can read uh, read the file into the buffer and so what we're going to do for this is we're going to use there are read system call so we can use it just as if it was a file uh, so here we go and we're going to uh, read in uh, file into buffer so we're going to do oh let's see what do we do here so we're going to need the file descriptor of the file that we want to read and then we're going to give it the address of the buffer and then the number of bytes that we want to read uh, luckily, we saved those things. So we'll do things, I guess, in reverse order. So we're going to have uh, the number of bytes that we want to read, which is RDX. Um, wait, yep. Okay, so move into RDX. Uh, remember, R15 is where we kept the bytes. So um, size, um, number of bytes uh, to read. Then we're going to move into RSI, the address of the buffer. So move into RSI, RAX, 
uh, whoops, address of the buffer. Then we'll move into uh, RDI, the file descriptor. And hopefully we've saved that file descriptor at some point in time. So the file descriptor, bu 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 bu. Uh, back up here, uh, the file descriptor was moved to RDI. And uh, we're going to be using RDI somewhere, sometime after that. So that's interesting. We're going to have to save uh, this file descriptor. So let's take a look at some of the other safe uh, things. So register 14 looks fine to me. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's save the file descriptor. Uh, so move into R14, uh, R, oh, you know what, do, 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 do. opening the file, uh, who, uh, who knows what, uh, who knows if RSI will be the same afterwards. So, uh, let's just, uh, be safe and move into R, uh, 14. Uh, RSI. So we're going to save the file descriptor. Oh, wait, this is opening the file. The file gives us a file descriptor. Okay, here we go. So we're going to save the file descriptor. And the file descriptor is actually going to be in RAX, I believe. Uh, when we open the file, uh, RAX will then have the file descriptor. Yes, here we go. So we're going to move that file descriptor in, uh, save the file descriptor for later. And uh, well, now is later. So we're going to move uh, into. Do, 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 do. Uh, number of bytes to read, address of the buffer, RSI, and R, um, wait, RDX. Okay, RDX, RSI, RDI, RDI, uh, R14, uh, file descriptor. Then we're going to move into uh, RAX, uh, the uh, system call number, which is read. So OX00, zero zero, um, read, and we'll do a syscall, and uh, the output of that syscall will be, oh, you know what, after each of these things, um, Rax has the uh, pointer to the allocated memory note. Um, we are not checking for an error. Rax equals negative one. Okay, so just so we're keeping things, uh, just so we're having good uh, documentation for all of this, um, Rax will have negative one, and um, and error number will be set. Uh, so we're not going to be checking that because it will just make this program just way longer and this is only designed to teach the concepts. So uh, we're going to read the file into the buffer and here we've read it into the buffer. So RAX now has um, a, um, actually, let's see, so we read into the buffer. So the buffer now has uh, the right thing. And if we do a read, let's see, if I do a man, whoops, uh, if I go, go over here, man read. Uh, so this should be a, sys oh, this is, uh, whoops. So like man, I believe to read should be the system. Yeah, read from file descriptor. Uh, so this will actually just return uh, the number of bytes um, read in RAX. Uh, so that's fine. Oh, that's, that's actually good. That's great. Um, so technically, we don't even need to save the original. Well, but it's fine. So the last thing that we need to do is return the buffer. So what we're going to do is just delete this because we don't need this rate console or converting stuff to a um, string anymore. Uh, what we're going to do is make sure that REX, um, RSI, and RDI have the right values. So uh, what we promised up here in our documentation is that REX is the file contents buffer. Uh, RDI will have the size of the file contents and R, um, 
uh, and R, wait, RDI will have the size of the file contents and RSI will have the size of the buffer allocation. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, oh, you know what we should do is we should make sure that we're saving that buffer allocation in some kind of register that will not be destroyed. So let's see the uh, number of bytes to allocate. So this is R R15 has the file size, R14 has the file descriptor. Um, allocating the bytes using mmap. Let's see, map private and anonymous, uh, bytes to allocate. Um, that's right, RAX has that value. So let's go ahead and save that just to be safe. Uh, we're gonna save that uh, number of bytes allocated into a register and we're just going to pick the next register that we can use, which is going to be R13. So move into R13, um, RAX, uh, save, uh, save the number of bytes to allocate. Okay. So now we'll be able to use all of these things where we can uh, update all of these things. So move. RAX, whoops, uh, so RAX needs to have the buffer, uh, which is going to have, uh, let's see, what was the number of bytes to read? The address, the address of the buffer, wait, did we save the address of the buffer? Because um, that'll get clobbered. We have to save the buffer address, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we have to save the buffer address. So, hey, let's, let's use another register, R12. R12 is great. Let's save the buffer address. Move into R12 um, buffer address, which will be RAX. Uh, save buffer address. So no, note here that this is kind of a, a sketch of things to do. It's not necessarily production code. And note that we're not checking for any of the errors here. This is just to kind of illustrate a concept. All right, so here we go. We're going to uh, uh, get the buffer. So that'll be R12. Then uh, the other thing that we're going to need is, uh, next one is RDI, which will have the size of the file contents. So RSI, uh, so the size of the file contents, that's the number of bytes to allocate. Um, aha, save the file size, which is R15. So R15, uh, oh wait, we should, we should say, that, say this, um, uh, buffer, file size, and then lastly, uh, RDI, which will have R, was it four? No, 14 has the descriptor, 13 number of bytes to allocate. Um, this will be the buffer size. All right, so that's very good. So now we should return all of this information that we need. That's great. Now, we can go back up to the top here to our major program. We can move our uh, file name in here. We can, and then we can call read file, and then after after we've read the program, we can print out, out the contents of the file that was read. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to uh, use our write console function, which will have RDI, which has the buffer address, and RSI, which has the buffer size. So, uh, RDI and RSI. Okay, awesome. Um, wait, are you saying that do, 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 RDI? Oh yeah, arg0 is RDI, okay. Our RDI has, wait, so RDI has the buffer and then uh, RSI has the buffer size? Okay, buffer address and buffer size. Okay, very good. So we can deal with that. Uh, so that means we need the uh, buffer uh, size. Move into RSI. Uh, the uh, uh, buffer size, so wait. Yeah, 
So rdi. So this will be the um, file size, right? Um, and then move into rdi. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, the actual buffer, which is rex buffer address. And then move into rex uh, the uh, the file. Oh no 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 no. It's not a system call. We're just going to make a call to um, write console, right? So that should be that should be that. Now, uh, one of, one of the things that you'll notice here is I'm basically clobbering uh, the value of the number of bytes that we allocated for the buffer. Now, typically, what you'd want to do after you did this write, you say that you were done with that buffer you would then do a m unmap, right? Now, uh, the reason why you would do that is like is because that you were done with that memory. Now, the thing is, in our program here, we're just going to exit the program. And uh, because the program is not doing anything any longer, you don't have to unmap the memory. In fact, uh, if you have, say, some memory that you're using throughout the an entire program, and you come to the end of the program. Should you um, deallocate or free that memory? Uh, some people will say yes, but the thing is, is if you do that, if you have a large, complicated program, you're actually going to slow down your program if you go through all of this effort to uh, to free this memory because your allocator has to do a bunch of of, of work. Now, the thing is, is all of that work will be in vain because the operating system will reclaim all of that memory. So it doesn't make sense to do, to do any of that work. So we're not going to do that here. Uh, if our program was a lot longer and we didn't need this memory anymore, then it would make sense to unmap it. But we're going to let the operating system take care of that because we're going to be immediately done. So if uh, we haven't made any mistakes, we should be able to do uh, main.asm, which will give us a new, oh, let's remove a.out so we're not confused, and also remove this test. So now we have a main program, and we should be able to, uh, oh, let's, let's check. I believe the, the name for the file, we're going to read our, this file itself. So we're going to read this file itself and try to print it out. So uh, the file name here will be uh, main.asm. So if we run this program, it should print out itself, but it doesn't. So we've got something incorrect here, and we're going to have to figure that out. Uh, so what we're going to do is, well, first of all, kind of read things through to make sure that we've got it, got things correctly. So that means that uh, RDI is the size of file contents, so we're removing the uh, file contents into RSI, and then we're moving the buffer address um, into um, RDI. So we're just going to make sure that the buffer is RDI and the file size is RSI. So uh, buffer is RDI, and the size is RSI. So we've got that correct. Uh, now let's see. So uh, write console should be OK. So that means that it's probably the, the, uh, the problem that we have is likely to be in uh, uh, here somewhere, right? So these things are, if we go look in here, Registers are considered non-volatile call E saved. So that is correct. So racks, RCX, RDX, R8, 9, 10, 11 are volatile and caller saved. So these are call E saved. So these registers, so we're using R12, 13, 14, and 15. Those registers should be safe for us to just use and call system functions. So that shouldn't be a problem. So this move R14 and RAX and then doing a system call should be fine. So the other thing that we need to make sure is to make sure that all of our system calls are correct, that we're doing them correctly. So seeking to the end of the file, we already knew that that worked from our previous program. Uh, determine the number of bytes to allocate. Now let's see if this is correct, right? Uh, 
one way that we could do this is we could, let's go into 05 uh, and look at our code that we have, oh, for read write console. Let's see, oh, let's look, write console. Okay, write console, that's good. So what we're gonna do is go over here for this uh, read, where's read file? Here we go. And we can take this stuff, this temporary, and we can actually put it back in, right? So, and what we're gonna do for this putting stuff back in is see how many bytes we need to allocate, right? So, let's go over here and oh, paste this in. And what we'll do here is just comment out the rest of this. Oh, we still need return. Return would be great. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print things out. Now, what do we want to print out? Um, uh, instead of converting the file size to a string, we're gonna convert uh, the bytes that we want to allocate, right, to a string. So, um, REX will still have the bytes that we wanna do um, anyway. Uh, I guess we could check to make sure that R13 has it. That's great. And then uh, buffer to convert to a string, we'll still use buff because that is down here and we've got a buff which is 80 characters and that's more than enough to print out the integer. Uh, we'll probably only have maybe a couple thousand bytes to print out. So there we go. All right, so then we call uh, the unsigned integer to alphanumeric and then, um, or, or yeah, until to alpha and then print the file size. So uh, the buffer size, rex, id buff and write console. So that should be great. The only thing that we have to do over here is just uh, comment out this part. So we should be able to do phasm main.asm run main and we get 8192. So basically two pages of memory, eight kilobytes. Now let's do uh, LA, we'll see how many bytes uh, is our uh, ASM file. So our ASM file is 4,701 bytes. Now that's larger than 4,096 bytes, so that makes sense why we would allocate 8,000 uh, 8,192 bytes. That, that means that we do actually need two pages. So that seems to be fine. So we've ruled out calculating, uh, we've ruled out calculating that number to be incorrect. So we know that everything up to this point is correct. So what about allocating the bytes using memory mapping? Okay, uh, we can print out some of this stuff too. And we'll delete it from here. Now, uh, we're gonna allocate bytes using memory map. Now, what we're, the return value of this could be negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the REX value, which, so instead of R13, we're going to take REX, and this should be, it should be, the uh, REX should actually be the address of the uh, memory that we're using. It should not be negative one. So negative one will actually be, what is it, all um, Fs in hexadecimal. 
So it'll be a very, very large value. Uh, the memory address will actually be a very large value too. So we'll probably have to convert it. Uh, but let's see how this works. So if we get a negative one here, uh, phasm, then we know that there's something bad that happened. All right, so one, uh, so this is obviously in decimal. So let's convert this to hexa hexadecimal. So let's go to our calculator here and we'll put this in and we'll convert this to hexadecimal, right? Wait, is that doing things, pro wait. Decimal, uh, actually I don't know about that. Let's just use a converter. So decimal to hex converter. All right, let's put in the decimal number convert and the hexadecimal number is this. So that actually looks like a, um, this looks like an actual address. So this seems good because uh, if we had, let's say we, we swapped these things around, let's say that we had uh, one byte, two byte, three bytes, four bytes, five bytes, six bytes, seven bytes, eight bytes, uh, and we converted that, we would have this number. And we obviously do not have this number, which is a negative one uh, as the uh, two signs con uh, signed two's complement. We do not have this number. We have a different number. We have, let's see, uh, is there no way for me to add a new... Oh, that's the conversion. We actually have this number. Um, so that's a different number and it's it's lower. And so this is just an address. So that seems to be correct. So we can rule out that there's something wrong there. So everything, um, so everything up to this system call, it seems to be correct or is correct. So now let's see, uh, now let's do this and read the file. Read the file into a buffer. So did we do that correctly? So let's take this away. So did we read the file correctly into the buffer? Uh, now that means that uh, rex um, has the read system call, which will be zero. Uh, and then, so rex is zero. And then the file descriptor. So we're going to have a file descriptor, which should be an r14, um, which was that correct? Yeah, file descriptor has r14. That's very good file descriptor, the address of the buffer, uh, which has rex. Now the address of the buffer, uh, well, that's the buffer address. So that's very good. And then the number of bytes to read is in R15. So R15, uh, did we do that correctly? Oh, maybe not. Number of bytes to allocate is in R13. Oh, well, maybe that's that's what we did incorrectly then. because R15 is the file size, okay, and R13 is the number of bytes to allocate, yes, okay. So we have possibly, we have possibly found our error. So that's interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna test this and see so we're gonna comment out this, and then we're gonna do this because the buffer the file size is an R15. See, we did that correctly here. We just didn't do it correctly up there. Now we'll go to the top and we'll... So this, let's see if it just works. Phasm main. Asm. Okay, so it still doesn't work. So there's something, whoops. So there's still something possibly wrong. Let's see, reading the file into the buffer. 
Well, uh, that could return a negative one. So let's see if it does. Whoops. Whoops. Okay. Actually, just use X. There we go. So now our X should have, um, when we read the buffer, it should have the number of bytes that was read. So it should be the number of bytes that the file is, is, is what should be an RAX this time. So if we read the file correct, oh, you know what? I know what we did incorrectly. Uh, obviously we fixed a bug up here, which was a bug, but there is something else that we need to do before we read the file into the buffer. We'll save the buffer address, and that is, we need to rewind the file. So right now, there is a an index into the file, and what we did is we zoomed that index to the very end to get the size of the file. Now to read the file, we have to put that pointer back uh, to the beginning of the file. That way we can actually read the file. Otherwise, we're just not reading any bytes whatsoever. So let's rewind the file, and that's using fseek, or lseek, right? So we're gonna use lseek here, and uh, uh, let's see. So that means uh, lseek has the whence um, uh, value, which I believe should be zero. So move into rdx uh, uh, zero, whence, Move into R, was it R, RSI? The offset value, which is going to be zero. And uh, we'll, we'll also have the file descriptor and RDI, right? So, uh, oh, let's see, offset. Move into RDI, the uh, file descriptor, and the file descriptor is. Uh, what was that, 14? Yes, 14. Oh, uh, R14. Okay, file descriptor. It's easy to forget these things. So, uh, so that gives us the file descriptor. Now we just need the system call. So rex needs to have uh, lseek, which is 8. So ox8. Oops, I'll seek. Okay, then we do syscall. Now, this should be okay. So let's see, let's actually comment out this temporary stuff and see if that actually does fix it. I'm more confident now that we actually completely fixed everything as long as I picked the right values for the whence and the offset. Print out the context of the file. So phasm main.asm main. Uh, so we still didn't get it, but did we? Okay, so that's good. So we rewound the file and read the file into the buffer. Actually, let's look this up. So lseek, man lseek. All right, here we are. File descriptor, offset, and whence. Uh, file offset is offset to offset bytes. Oh, seek set. Oh yeah, what is seek set? Because we went to seek end, what's seek set? Is seek set zero or is it one? Okay. So the whence value needs to be this. And we're gonna set it to, the offset bytes do, do need to be zero. But let's once again create a test.c file include, uh, what are we including? 
uh, std io.h um, include uh, sys m. What was it? So let's let's see. Uh, man l seek. Let's go and see if there's a nice little. Oh. Okay. So man two. Um, oh, I know. We can look for an l seek l seek example. So that way, if we can see how it, it's done in C, then it should be easy to see. Okay, here we go. l seek. Oh, here we go. Uh, we, I don't think we need all of these things, but we'll we'll get them anyway. So test, there we go. That makes it super easy. Int main void, oops, return zero. And then what we're gonna do is print f um, set seek. I believe that's what it wanted from us, right? So do, do, do. Let's see, uh, man l seek, seek set. We almost had it, seek set, right? So then obviously seek set will be that, gcc test a dot out, seek set is zero, so that's good. So all of that to say, uh, seek set should be zero, so that's great. So that means that both of these things should be zero. So the wince and the offset, um, yeah. So the wince um, is a seek set, which is zero. The offset will be zero, and the file descriptor uh, will be RDI fourteen. So RDX RDI, um, so RDI RSI RDX. So RDI should have. Uh, LC. Yeah, file descriptor. So that's good. And oh, LSeq, just to make sure it is eight. That's good. So everything should be fine here. So if we do a system call, that should rewind the file. And then when we read the file into the buffer, so let's just see if we get an error when we read the file. Because rex should have the number of bytes that was read by the file. So we, if we go back up here, uh, this will comment that out. Phasm uh, main .asm. and there we go. So we've get this. Oh, that looks very bad. That looks like a negative one to me. Looks like a negative one. All right, let's see. Um, oh, did when we opened the file, we opened it for read, correct? Let's see. Uh, hexadecimal. Yep, this uh, one eight blah blah blah. Let's swap. So decimal number. Convert to hex. Um, wait, what? Can I go back? So what what's the number that I got here? One eight four four eight six seven four four one. Maybe it's not negative one. I mean it looks like a very strange number to me. Oddly close. So the decimal number here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. Now, remember, the number that we feed into our... 
the number that we feed into ui to a, uh, the number that we feed here, uh, we're, we're assuming it's an unsigned integer. But what if it's a, we are feeding a signed integer into this though, right? But two is complement signed integer. So we do, this is negative one. So th there is an error here uh, for us reading file a file into the buffer. Why is that? Did we close the file? We should also close the file. Um, so we, we open the file, open, save the file descriptor into R14, read only. We are, and we're read, we're opening it for read. So that's good. We're seeking to the end of the file, determining the number of bytes to allocate. So that's good. Save the number of bytes, uh, allocate um, bytes using minmap. And that w worked out. Um, then we save the buffer address, which is going to be rex, and then we rewind the file. So this lseek, what is the return value of lseek? Actually, we should look at the manual. If we're going to be correct or proper, yeah, so it should be an offset number. Do, do, do. Return value upon successful completion, LSEQ returns the following offset location. On error, it returns negative one. So we should check to make sure that we're rewinding this file correctly. So let's let's do that. Oh, you know what? Look at, look at what we're doing here. That's that's not good. That may have caused a problem in the first place, but let's um, wait. Let's rewind the file. Uh, we'll close this here. And reading the file into the buffer, we'll comment out for now. And that means that that, that needs to be commented out. OK. Let's print, um, let's print the result of rewinding the file. So phasm main asm. Oh. That is interesting. Ha. Huh. Did not expect that. So let's, I was expecting at least some number. REX should have the return value of LSEQ. Uh, which it should be, I mean, it should either be a positive number of, or, well, I guess it could be zero. Could be zero. I don't know if we ever tried to, oh, we may not have a good way of printing out zero. So as just a test, I'm just going to increment this number, so increment racks, right? So that's just temporary. Okay, it's just that we can't print out zero. So zero sh is correct, like that should be correct. Uh, so it's not the problem with the rewind. That means there needs to be a problem with reading the buffer. Now the output 
read the file into the buffer. Oh. 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 Maybe we're returning the wrong value here. Read the file into the buffer. Address of the buffer. Oh, look at that. After we rewind the file, RAX is going to have zero. That's not the address of the buffer. We should, since we saved the buffer address, we should put it here, right? R12. That's going to be the address of the buffer. And then the output of reading the file uh, will be how many bytes that we read. Okay, so... Forty-eight twenty-six. That's awesome. Because forty-eight twenty-six is the number of bytes in main.asm, we may have fixed all of the bugs. This will be a moment of rejoicing. So let's go ahead. We won't get rid of this yet. We'll just comment it out and move this in uh, now what will the buffer the buffer will be still be r12 so that's good let's go back up here and set that up phasm main if this works it'll be awesome hey we printed out the entire thing down to the last byte. It works amazing. Now you can understand, like we have a relatively small program here, and yet it took us a decent amount of time to debug this. Now obviously we could have used the debugger, which is GDB, but I didn't want to introduce a whole other thing. Introducing GDB and breakpoints and all that stuff is a whole other universe of stuff. And GDB, it's okay, it does its job, but you would really hope that there would be something better than GDB by now. So we did it. We made it work. So now let's clean this thing up a little bit because we have this unused junk code. There we go. And that should be it. So it should still compile even after all those comments are, are out. Should still run. And it does. So that's it. So that's great. So we w successfully accomplished our mission uh, within six videos. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so that concludes the series. I may d dive into more uh, assembly language stuff later on. But uh, so far, I'm just really happy with what we've got right now. So we have uh, uh, showed off quite a few things, including uh, asking for memory from the operating system. And we showed a little bit about how to debug a system, how to look up information on calling conventions, and uh, how to look up uh, functions, and also how to create test functions. Like we created a nice little test um, application here, test.c, which we're going to remove now because we don't need it. Uh, but uh, um, I think that is actually a very successful thing. So. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, until uh, next video. Bye.